everyone. This is Emily with Canix's product team, and I'm going to quickly walk through some of the manufacturing functionality in our manufacturing module. As you'll see in the table here for manufacturing batches, there is a list of all of the production runs that are happening at this moment, and you can utilize the filters or these different views here to create new saved views based on brands or different product lines, or utilizing filters related to dates to be able to say what's in production this week versus maybe what's in production for a certain month, etc. Other information that you can see on this table are where it is in the process. So run one of five represents that there are five steps in this process and we're on step one of five. However, once we submit all five of them, we'll see that the status will change to ready for completion. Or once we've completed that or marked it complete, we'll see at the status at the bottom here that it's completed. You'll also see all of the source weight that's accumulated through the process and all of the output weight any waste and resulting in a total yield, but those yields and all of this information to drill into different production batches created, different product lines, any of that information are better utilized in our reporting with our integration with ThoughtSpot. We do have a number of reports that we'll cover in a later video, but you also have the access to custom reporting, which will give you to, uh, the ability to filter or uh, manipulate the data for any of the fields that you enter in. As you go to create a new batch, you have the concept of batch templates in order to standardize a particular process so that it's repeatable each time. As we look at one, maybe these, this distillate process, we'll see that it has a series of runs, which are steps in the process. And each run can be given a name, whether it represents the type of process that's happening, or some people will utilize each step in the process as a different uh, run of the same production. Each step represents the full production start to finish. So it might just be multiple runs to complete in order to get a final bulk number. You'll also see a run type. Those are just extra categories. So rather than um, putting the same name, which can help categorize things in different reports, you could say the type of process that it is so that you can see how much time or what are the yields or labor rates for a specific type of process versus looking at a customizable name. Other things to note here are the items here under each run. This isn't required, but you can add different output items and this will determine the bill of material that's available to select from as you start the run. You may produce different types of items as a result of this step, but this just points to which bill of material do you want it to represent when you first start it. We'll cover that as we go to execute the different runs, but this just shows that you're able to set which bill of material you want to utilize moving forward. As we go back to our batches, we'll go ahead and use one of those to start our batch. And we'll give it a naming convention based on our product and maybe a, a batch number of sorts. And we'll choose the template that we were just looking at for distillate. As you see here, it's filled the runs or the steps of our process that we're going to walk through. But before I go into the different runs, I'll just cover some of the information that you have here on the batch. Here, you'll set the start and end date. That was what you saw on the table to represent production and even being able to set up this production ahead of time. Any notes about it that you wanna have displayed, and then you'll also be able to add attachments for the entire batch. You can add that per run, which we'll cover at a later point, but as a batch total, some people may add the signed documents of what was completed outside of Canix, if there's any documentation that you guys are doing outside of Canix. Others may put photos or attach forms or anything else that was done as supplemental information. As you complete this run or these runs in the batch, this will all culminate into a batch record that you can download. And this is a PDF record of everything that went into the batch, cannabis materials, non-cannabis materials, labor, notes, all of that information, as well as what was created in each of the steps and their yields. Lastly, you can configure this batch ad hoc or add additional information or steps to this batch than what you had from the template. So if you weren't using a template, you would be able to just add the run as is, giving it a name and the type, just as we have here, and optionally choosing the bill of materials at this time, or you can choose it at a later time. You can also reorder the runs as needed. So if anything gets added and needs to be put into the middle of the process, maybe running multiple uh, rounds of distillation, 
then those can be added in, in the right format needed. Lastly, this example here shows uh, that we'll have a, a source input and an output for every step of this process. However, it doesn't have to be as uh, granular as I have it here, or it could be even more granular than I have it here. Some may do just a few steps where it will go from bulk material to a bulk oil, bulk oil to a bulk finished product, and then a finished product to the final packaging just three steps where they complete the entire process in those steps. Others have broken this out into a much more detailed process where they had those multiple levels of distillation, like I mentioned. Great, that covers the batch level records, but we will be covering how to execute the different runs and the information that you can extract from those runs in reporting in the next video.